Welcome back to O'Connor's Kitchen at Wingate Farm. This episode I'm calling the paella episode because mainly we're going to be working on making paella on the fire. How fun is that? We're going to make it on our solo stove out here on the porch. We don't want the fire to be too hot because then the vegetables and the meat will burn. We want to kind of get it to be on a kind of a medium heat so that when we put the broth in, we don't burn the rice at the bottom. One of the things that you're trying to do, one of the specialties of a good paella is what they call the saccharat, which is when the aborio rice has sat on the fire in the pan with the stock and it forms this crust, this really delicious crust. Uh, and the trick is trying not to burn it. But even if it's burned, it's good. So we're not gonna worry about that. All right, let's get started. I'm calling this the paella episode. We're gonna make paella on the solo stove. Paella is a Mediterranean dish that requires a lot of patience because there are many different steps involved. It can be made as a seafood dish or as meat. We're actually gonna do some seafood and meat in it because we have a vegetarian coming for dinner. It's the kind of meal that takes patience because there are lots of different steps. You gotta fry the meat, then the veggies, then add the rice, and a beautiful broth that has been soaking in saffron. And it's gonna be great. It's one of those meals that requires patience because of it has to sit in the broth for quite a bit of time so that the aborio rice soaks up the broth and that's what softens it. And we're gonna add some lots of different broth and we're gonna add some tomatoes and artichokes um, and just let it sit. Here is some local Vermont organic chicken and sausage. We have some chorizo and some spicy Italian sausage. I'm also going to add some scallops at the end because I do have a vegetarian coming later and so she can have the scallops. The meat's browning nicely. Just going to flip it. Might have to take the sausages out first. They're cooking a little bit faster. There we go. Okay, I think the sausage is ready to come off. So I'm gonna take a slotted spoon and get this sausage out. The chicken still needs to cook a little bit. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, I'm just gonna cool it down a tad. Okay. So that yummy sausage. Of course, sourced in Vermont. Yummy chorizo, local pork. The chicken's taking a little bit longer, so I'm gonna leave that on. I'm gonna leave all these yummy juices in there. Okay, let's let that cook just for a little bit more. Over here. Mmm, that's gonna be good. And then we're gonna add the vegetables right to that pan. So I'm gonna get that ready. We've got some different assorted peppers. And we're going to put in some of this tomato sauce, some artichoke hearts, and then, of course, the rice and the broth. The broth has been, I've been soaking it with some saffron, which gives it a really delicious taste. So we're going to use both of those. Almost ready. That's also going to cook in the rice and the broth, so it, it doesn't have to be 100% cooked, but that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to take the chicken off now. 
do that step. And then we're going to add the chopped up vegetables. Onions, peppers. That can get a little hotter. Want some more heat? Yes, please. Okay. Cut Ember. Ember's eating all the leftovers. It's a dance with the fire. It can't be too hot, but it has to be hot enough. So it's, it's really an art to figure out just how to get the fire right. It's a lot easier to do on the stove, but I thought it'd be a fun, fun to show you how you can play with the fire. I love figuring out how to cook on fire. It's actually nice that it's not sticking. Getting close. The peppers and onions are nicely softened. So I'm gonna add back in the sausage. And the chicken. I'm gonna nestle this all in because it's gonna cook in the broth and the juices. Okay, now I'm gonna add in some artichoke hearts. And then we're gonna add in the aborio rice. So this is the, the key to paella, is the aborio. And I'm gonna add enough to kind of cover everything up. It's not a perfect science as you can see. Add this tomato. Then I'm just gonna stir that once. Okay. Mix that in. Maybe you could feeling a little, what do you think? Feeling a little hot or what do you think? Yeah. yeah. I want to just coat the rice kernels with the juices and the oils from the meat and the tomato. Yum, it already smells amazing. Okay, now I'm going to cover this with the broth. And you have to keep adding the broth as it cooks down because it's gonna take the rice probably 30 minutes to an hour to cook. And you're not gonna stir this now. I've stirred it once. Now the key is that you don't want it to be too the fire to be too hot. It's kind of a two person job paella, so I'm glad I have my partner here helping me because I'm gonna go inside and work on the rest of the meal. We're gonna make some dessert and some sides to go to the paella. Okay, we'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> While Phil is watching the paella, which I think is almost done, we're gonna make some dessert. Um, this is my mother's famous molasses cookie recipe. And I've already made the molasses dough and basically gonna stick it in some, roll it in some sugar. And then we're gonna just bake those. I always think of my third son, Amos, when I make these because he can gobble these up in a minute. Molasses cookies are the best. So I'm gonna stick these in the oven at 375. And move on to our salad. I have a beautiful spinach salad with local greens. And I put some cranberries in there and I made a poppy seed dressing to go on top. But we won't, we won't dress that until we're just about ready to eat. I wanted to show you for the final part of the meal, samurai bread, which I've actually taken out of the freezer, fresh samurai bread. But you can also freeze this bread and then take it out of the freezer, put it in the oven for 10 minutes, and it's just crunchy, just like a fresh loaf. 
You can go to my website, O'ConnorsKitchen.com, to order your mix today. But I wanted to show you the special dipping sauce with, that goes with the bread that's super easy to make. So get your favorite olive oil, and put that in a dish. And I love this balsamic vinegar that's made by Seven Barrels out of Denver, Colorado. And this one is a red apple balsamic vinegar. Can you believe red apple? We actually had this at my son's wedding in September. And we had samurai bread on the table and this dipping sauce, which is the olive oil, red apple balsamic vinegar, and then a few of these red pepper flakes. Okay, well, I think I better go check on the paella. Oh, I'm so excited to taste this paella. My trusted partner has done a great job of watching it and mending the fire. So I'm gonna taste it and see if we're ready to eat. So i get my tasting spoon in there. Mmm, mmm. El Dante, which is just what you want the Aborio to be. Not too mushy, just like a little bite to it. It's delicious. It's pretty much ready to go. We don't wanna leave it on the fire much longer. One of the things I'm gonna test is the bottom which is called the saccharat. And you don't wanna, you wanna get that nice crunch on the bottom, which it actually has. So we're just gonna take that off the fire at like 30 minutes. We're gonna let all the flavors meld together and then we'll be ready to eat. Let's eat. Yeah, let's eat! Everything's ready, yay! Ramsey, will you do the honors of breaking our bread, our samurai yeah, bread? Delicious. I'm gonna dress the salad, and Nicole, please dig in, help yourself to our beautiful paella. Oh, Walter, so get a plate. Mmm, smells delicious. Get that bottom. It better be delicious. Make sure you get the saccharat. Just like dig under to the bottom. Oops. That's okay. That's really a child moment. Enough. What can I say? <laughs> he dropped the chicken. Not about strength. It's about finesse. I know. <laughs> oh. um, can. We'll go can I give you a little fire. salad? We'll go eat by the fire. Yeah. Go right. Yeah. Yeah. Voila. Yeah. That's what you Don't want. forget voila, voila. le pain, le pain, le pain. Le pain, le pain. Good for you. And okay. the dipping sauce. Yeah. Dipping in your uh, sauce. The dipping sauce, yes, the sauce. Oh, look at that saccharat, gorgeous, delish. It actually worked pretty well. Can I serve you some salad? Go make a cozy place by the fire. Take a fork. Thank you. I already have one. Okay, you don't forget your samurai bread. What could be better than friends and family around the fire? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Thank you, Mama. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us at O'Connor's Kitchen. See you next time. Welcome to the Mountain Guides. They operate five mountain guiding companies in the American West. The Mountain Guides of Utah, the Mountain Guides of Red Rock, the Mountain Guides of Montana, the Mountain Guides of Colorado. Their flagship operation in Jackson Hole is based in Jackson and leading trips all over the high peaks of the Rocky Mountains. Join their custom mountain adventures led by experienced guides in the iconic destinations. For more information, Log on to themountainguides.com.